Okay, so now I'm going to introduce you to the TI Inspire CXCAS calculator. So we're going to use this first in this video and learn how to use it to simplify expressions. Now this is a computer algebra system calculator. You need to know that term. CAS means computer algebra system. It's a little bit controversial in math technology. Uh, a piece of math technology is a bit controversial. In some classes, some teachers don't want you to use this. And the reason is because it makes math change significantly. In the case of a computer algebra system, the computer inside the calculator does all, follows all the rules of algebra to solve and simplify expressions. And and so some teachers, when they're teaching you how to do it by hand, they don't want you to do it using a computer algebra system. I've shown you how you can do an example or two of how you can do it by hand. And as we go through problems, I'll show you more. But I, I think that unless you're going to be a math teacher yourself, it's very likely that you will be very much appreciative to use computer algebra systems. Now, can they be used on exams? The answer is some. They can be used on the SAT. Currently, they cannot be used on the ACT. They can be used um, on the Praxis exams. So I know you guys don't use those right now or probably aren't familiar with them, but that's another set of exams they're used on. Um, I think m most AP exams do not allow them, but I'm not 100% sure. So I, I don't know. I know that they are used on some and used on not used on others. And if you really want to, if you're concerned about learning by hand, don't become over-reliant on the computer algebra system, okay? You need to learn to, to do it by hand, okay? On the other hand, if you are a student that wants to get through high school and you are really concerned about being able to do this level of math and it's been hard for you, the algebra's been hard for you, you should definitely learn to use this. And let me just tell you that in the Common Core, it does call for you to use computer algebra systems. It asks for you to learn to use them. So I'm teaching you something that's not forbidden. In fact, it's actually something we're supposed to teach you based on the Idaho core standards in mathematics. So I'm teaching you what you need to learn, OK? So all of that said, we're going to see a computer algebra system here on the TI Inspire CX calculators. They also sell this calculator, which is a TI Inspire CX without the CAS. Okay, so you, some teachers will tell you you can buy that one, but you can't have the CAS version. And then I'm going to teach you, after we use the calculator, I'm going to teach you how to use the CAS system in GeoGebra, which is pretty much, uh, you know, I'm not that familiar with it. I'm familiar with it enough to use it basically, but I have found it to be pretty much the same thing, working pretty much the same way. So that's good, okay? So let's start with the calculator's layout. You have the screen up here, this yellow. Uh, section on the top is wireless so that I can send files to them and they can send files back. This is a trackpad. You can run your finger on it lightly without pushing and you'll find the cursor when it comes up will move around on the screen. Some important buttons here. This button takes you to calculator. Um, escape is very important. Control escape. So whenever you hit control, then you're activating the blue command. And in this case, you can see that that is the undo arrow. So control escape undoes. That's a really good one to know. Turning it on and going to the home screen. See that home and on. Control on turns it off. Um, document menus, the, right, the other menus. These are both very important buttons that you'll use a lot. Tab moves you around on the field. So they're kind of they're kind of good. Here are your numbers. These are your operations over here. Your basic arithmetic operations. Over here are some of the exponent operations that you'll need to use. There is an equal sign which you can use to get to trig functions. You use this. There are your grouping symbols, right? In here, this is a really important button right here. This is where there are templates. So you'll see, I'll try to show you a few of those in a minute. And then over here in this button is for um, uh, a bunch of commands. So some special commands. We're not going to get into that too far. Enter is how you process. One thing that I want to see that's really important is negative versus minus. They are not the same thing. Computer algebra systems, you've got to be specific. So if you mean subtract or take away, you use minus. If you mean that a term is negative, you use the negative sign. Finally, down here, we have a space button. That's the space button here. You have all of these letters that you can use. 
this has the Greek letters in it there's a comma that's an important button and a couple of other buttons which are not quite as important I'm not going to worry about right now so what we're going to do is we're just going to turn it on so we turn it on by pressing that on home button right and this is basically our home you see the home shows up here and we're in the home screen on the left is called scratch pad on the right are the documents I'm not going to use a document right now I'm just showing you that they exist okay we're just going to use the scratch pad now on the scratch pad is is I is designed for you to do calculations without worrying about saving them or doing anything with them just to make calculations there is the calculate screen which is good for doing calculations and then there is the graph screen which is good for graphing calculations we're not going to graph calculations today that'll be another day down here on the bottom these are apps that I'm not going to have you worry about right now they are to start new documents or create pages inside of documents so today we're not using these at all but before this class is over you will definitely be using these so that's basically what I'm going to show you oh these left and right arrows move you over and and um, uh, I'm that, I'll show you the rest of that later on let's go into the calculator so again there's two ways to get there I can highlight so I can click if I move my arrow around I can click around and I can go up here until I've got it highlighted and when A is highlighted I could press this center button or I could press the enter button and either one of them will take me there a more direct route is to see that calculate has the letter A next to it and I could just press A and it'll and make that command happen same thing with these over here they all have numbers next to them and this one has a letter so you press that letter A or B or any of those numbers and it'll make those commands happen okay moving right along <clears throat> another way and this is the last one I'm going to show you how to get to the calculator is using the calculate button so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to press A a is to calculate okay now some kids worry they like to clear things out please get your, used to the idea that there'll be information up there and don't worry about it and what's helpful about this is that you can go back and track so if you've got a mistake you say what I do wrong if you're leaving this is called the history if you leave the history I can help you with it another important reason for leaving your history is that sometimes you want to copy things and paste them down and you can do that here so I'm going to use this just simply all we're doing right now is simplifying expressions in my last video you might remember that I was simplifying a couple of expressions so the first expression was this one 3x plus negative 2 or it was minus 2 plus 4x right so what's really nice about this calculator is that I can just put things in just like that I press 3 and then down here in the letters down here below you can't see it but there's an x and then minus 2 and then plus 4 X. And if I hit enter, you can see that while we had to think about combining together the 3x and the 4x, right, by using the commutative property to make 7x, the calculator just did it for us. It just simplified it for us. Now remember, this is important to know. The calculator will come up with its own way of putting maybe the 2 first or the x part first and you may come up with slightly different form. Remember that just because the calculator is giving you a different form than what you did or a different form from what you see as a potential answer on a test or in Khan Academy, they may be equivalent expressions. Right? So you can test equivalent expressions by putting them next to each other and putting an equal sign. I told you these are equivalent. So let's go 3. Well, actually I'm going to show you how to copy and paste. I want to prove these are equivalent. So I use this up arrow, and I go up once, and I hit enter. And what that does, when it's highlighted, is it, when I hit enter, or this button here, the select button, it copies it and pastes it down here. Now I'm going to hit the equals button right there, and I'm going to go up, and I'm going to bring down the next expression. So what I'm saying to the calculator is, hey, this expression equals that expression. And I'm going to hit enter, and the calculator tells me yes that's true now if I'd done something wrong it would tell me that was false but it's telling me that that's true so that's a important thing that you should know that you can do you check your answer that you see on the screen or in your test or something else against the expression you have here and you compare them and see if they're just the same okay next thing you remember we had this one here 8x minus 28 over 4 and we had to do all that factoring I'm going to show you a couple tricks for doing that, okay? But first, I'm just going to show you the quickest way to get myself 
to the simplified form, 2x minus 7. So to, to do that, I want to put in a fraction. Well, you remember this button over here that I told you was a template button next to the 9? If I press that button, I see all kinds of templates. Let's look at these real quick right here. I've got a fraction. I've got powers. I've got roots. I've got, you know, nth roots. Um, this is stuff we'll get into later on. We've got some calculus stuff, really cool stuff. This is absolute values. Well, I want to just do a fraction so I can go up and hit enter. Okay, and you see what happens is that it gives me a template that I can put a numerator in and then a denominator in. Another thing, another way to do that, and this is a shortcut for that, is just to press control divide. Now that makes sense because a fraction is division. And you can see it right there. So if I just press control divide, control divide, I get the fraction template. So that's my preferred way because it's just a couple little keystrokes a little faster. So now I'm going to put in what we had for our expression. That was 8x minus 28 over 4. And I hit enter. And I get exactly what we had before, 2x minus 7. And I can test those to see if they are true by just typing, copying the first one and then hitting enter. And the second with an equal sign in between, I hit enter and I get true. Okay? The other thing that I taught you was finding the greatest common factor or the greatest common divisor. So this is just a good thing to know. If I needed to know what the greatest common divisor was between 8 and 28, it turns out that in the calculator over here where this dictionary is, where those commands are, I can press the dictionary. And then I can look and I find that there is a command called GCD. And GCD is going to tell me my greatest common divisor and I, it tells me the format down here how to put it. Open parentheses, put the first number, comma, then the second number. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to go like this. I just type out GCD. I want to know the GCD of, the first one was um, 8 and comma, the second one was 28. When I press enter, I should find it was 4, which is what we found when we listed all the factors and found them by hand. Okay? This becomes important when you start dealing with really hairy, ugly expressions that you get in, in um, algebra. We'll get polynomials that are very ugly, and we'll have groups of polynomials, and we'll need to find the greatest common divisor, greatest common factor, and, and we do factoring by hand a lot. But with a computer algebra system, we don't have to do them by hand. So let me go ahead now and take you to GeoGebra. I'm going to pull that up to save some time and be right back with it. Okay, so this is the GeoGebra application. It's good for you to know. You'll use it a ton in geometry. We'll use it some in algebra. If you're working from home and you don't have a computer algebra system, you can get to GeoGebra at home. Okay, and that's really, really going to be helpful to you if you need to do work from home and you don't have one of these fancy calculators. So what I'm just going to point out to you for right now is that what we're looking at is we're looking at the algebra side over here and we're looking at the geometry side. But what I want to view is this computer algebra system. So once I click that, in comes a line. And with that line, I can put things in like we had before. So let's just, I'm hoping this is going to work because I haven't used this exact uh, program for this exact function. Um, and I see that it's got, it, it took my command 3x minus 2 plus 4x and it just returned a simplified version. So let's see real quick here. I think I've got a template. Now where is my template here? Okay, so this is a little bit trickier because there isn't a template that I can see here, right? So um, let's see if there's one. I don't see one. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to learn grouping symbols. So remember what, what that means is that remember when I had that problem that was um, 8x minus 28 and then it was over 4? I've got to put the numerator together in a big giant parentheses because I don't have, I don't have a denominator. And then I can put my, or I don't have um, a template. Then I can put my fraction bar and then I can put 4 underneath. And when I hit enter, I see that I get the 
Same expression. Isn't that funny? I had 7x minus 2 and 2x minus 7, and I didn't plan that. But anyway, I see that it took my equation and it did simplify it. So those are two things that I can do. I don't know if we can find the greatest common denominator. Let's try that. Greatest common denominator of 8 and 28. And I'm pretty sure it's going to because did you notice as soon as I started typing it, it says, hey, look at this, man. You can list numbers, polynomials. You can use this format and just put it in using that format and it will work. So that's pretty cool. And I know that you can do a lot of things like solving in here. So if I had, what it, if x plus 2 equals 5, I would put a comma x in there and that would let me solve for x. Now this is just like from our first lesson when I talked about we had some apples, we added two apples and we got five apples. So how many did we have to begin with? Well, you know if I added two and I got to five, I must have started with three. But this is just to demonstrate that we can solve using a solve command and it will solve for us. So this is really, really, really good. Um, this is good tool to have. It's useful, um, especially when you don't have your CAS at school. And for kids that really struggle with their algebra, this is absolutely the game changer for you. It's going to help you get through this class.